Acts chapter number 12, we'll begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, Now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him. Well, they must have been afraid of him. Have all them soldiers keeping him, huh? Uh, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. When they were past the first and second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord, and they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel, and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod, and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. Let's pray. Our Father, we sure do thank you for the good prayer time we've had this evening, the good singing. Lord, just a good fellowship to be with thy people. Lord, we know it's cool outside, it's raining, it's miserable. But Lord, in here, everything's wonderful, and God, we're thankful. And it's most wonderful because, Lord, you're in our midst. Now, Father, I pray you'd help us now. Bless the reading of the Word of God. Encourage and help your people. And God, may we truly draw closer to God, and God draw closer to us. Uh, bless now, and we'll thank you for it. Use this unworthy vessel, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. And amen. I want to draw your attention to several things from this uh, chapter. I want you to notice, first of all, the detention. In verse number 5, Peter therefore was kept in prison. We find he is detained. He is kept in prison. I want you to realize he's in prison not for doing anything wrong. He's in prison because he ruffled the feathers of the Jews and he preached the gospel. Uh, he told folks the truth, uh, and folks didn't like it. Uh, can I say, uh, when you make a stand on the things of God, you're going to upset people. doesn't matter uh, uh, where you do it or how you do it. Uh, you can be as sweet and as kind and as nice as you want to be, uh, but all you have to do is mention the name of Jesus, and you're going to upset some folks. Uh, we find he is detained. He's in detention. Now, notice the devotion. In verse number 5, look what it says. Uh, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church uh, unto God for him. Uh, uh, aren't you glad uh, that no matter what you're going through, uh, you've got a church family that knows how to pray and get a hold of God? Uh, this church family was so upset uh, that Peter uh, uh, was being detained. They'd already seen uh, James uh, 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 had been martyred. Uh, now Peter's next in line, uh, and they're upset. Uh, and rather than just pout about it, uh, rather than just suck their thumb, uh, rather than do nothing, uh, they said, there's one thing we can do. Uh, we can pray. Uh, and they prayed without ceasing. Uh, and I believe that's what got God's attention uh, in order to move and do something for Peter. Uh, we see their devotion. They just didn't come together and pray once and go to the house. They met at a house and they prayed without ceasing. I would to God we'd get that concerned about things to where we would truly get a burden for God to do something supernatural. We see then the deliverance. Look at verse 7. 
And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him. The light shined in the prison. He smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Rise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. Uh, the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind thy sandals. And so he did. Uh, and he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him. Uh, wist not that it was true, which was uh, done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. Uh, and when they were past the first and second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city which opened to them of his own accord uh, and they went out and passed on uh, through one street and forthwith the angel departed from him do you realize how many miracles are in those three verses we just read you don't believe in a supernatural all powerful God then you don't believe the Bible Peter is chained up asleep between uh, two soldiers the angel wakes him up doesn't wake them up and the Bible said a light shined those guys were in comas not to see that light. The light shined. He hits Peter on the side, tells him to get up. When he gets up, the chains fall off of him. Now, I don't know about you, but when chains fall off, they make a lot of racket. Mm -hmm. Soldiers don't wake up. Then they go throughout the prison. I don't know how big this prison is, uh, but I know one thing. They don't keep prisoners uh, near the gate to which he leads out. There's somewhere inside the prison. The angel's leading Peter out. Uh, there's all kinds of other prisoners in there. There's all kinds of soldiers, four quaternions of soldiers down there. Uh, 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 there's two keepers, uh, one at the first ward and one at the second ward. Uh, they go right past those guys, uh, get to the iron gate of the, of, of the prison. Uh, when they get there, the gate opens up on its own accord. Tell me we don't serve a great God. You talk about deliverance, what a delivering God uh, we have. Aren't you glad when you was bound by uh, uh, the chains of sin uh, and you were steeped in sin uh, and the devil had his hold on you, uh, there was no hope for you. Uh, aren't you glad God knew how to get to where you was uh, and able to do great and supernatural things uh, uh, to deliver your never dying soul? Uh, we see the deliverance. Uh, now notice Peter's dismay. Look at verse number 9. And he went out and followed him and wist not that it was true. Have you ever just been around God doing something and you just say it's too good to be true? Hmm? Oh, I have. I'm thinking, somebody pinch me. Wake me up. This is too good. God's too good. Huh? But then it goes on to say this. Uh, he wished not it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. Now look down in verse number 11. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord had sent his angel and had delivered me out of the hand of Herod uh, and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. I mean, he was just in dismay. Yep. He's thinking, I'm dreaming. There's a song that says, If I'm dreaming, let me dream on. Hmm? I mean, when you uh, uh, start weighing all the benefits of God and all the blessings of God, uh, I, I mean, it's a blessing enough that He saved us. Uh, uh, but think of all the benefits after we got saved. Uh, uh, the fruit of the Spirit uh, every day gives us strength to get up out of the bed, uh, puts breath in our body, puts food on our table, clothes on our back, shoes on our feet, a roof over our head. Uh, I mean, God's been good to us. Uh, man, we, can get, we can get to thinking about the things of God, and it's almost too good to be true. He's in dismay. But then I want you to notice, if you will, the disbelief. Look at verse number 12. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then they said, It is his angel. But Peter continued knocking, and when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Now, did not verse 5 tell us that they ceased not to pray for him? Amen. And then when God answers their prayer, they don't believe it. Hmm? I'm glad they had enough faith to pray, but they didn't have enough faith to think God would answer. 
Hmm? Poor little Rhoda. She knew it was Peter. She was so excited she forgot to open the door. Hey! Peter's here. It's just kind of like those ladies when they left the tomb and went, got down there to the disciples. Hey, he's not there. He's risen. They didn't believe it either. Hmm? How many times has God answered our prayer and we're almost in disbelief? We knew God could, but we didn't believe God would. And then he answers the prayer and we're thinking, wow, what was me for not believing that God would? Hmm? And then we see the declaration in verse 17. Look what it says. But he beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go show these things unto James and unto the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. And he said, Go tell James the just. Why did he tell James? James was the pastor of the church of Jerusalem. He wanted to encourage the brethren. We see the declaration. Look what great things God has done. You know what you and I are called of God to do is to tell a sinful and lost world what great things God has done for us. I'm interested in verse number 6. The Bible says, And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. Isn't it amazing God always moves right on time? The very same night that he's going to be executed, God showed up. Aren't you glad God's never late? Hmm? But notice that same night you find Peter chained between two soldiers. I mean, he's bound with two chains. I mean, one would have been enough. They had him bound with two chains between two soldiers, and the keepers we were before the door that kept the prison. I mean, in just a few hours, Brother Ray, he's going to be executed. Brother Brian, I don't know about you, but if I'm chained between two soldiers with two chains, and I know i just got hours to live, the last thing I'm going to be doing is sleeping. But what's the Bible said he's doing? Sleeping. I know people get a hangnail and they want me to call the prayer chain. This brother is bound between two soldiers uh, with chains in the middle of a prison with uh, uh, prison guards all around him, uh, knowing uh, uh, at first morning light he's headed to the executioner chopping block, uh, and here he is, asleep. Yes, sir. Does anybody else find this odd? Amen. Peter's not normal, that's for sure. He certainly wasn't a Baptist. But he's asleep in the most dire of situations. As dark as it could be, he's not wringing his hands. He's not pacing the floor. He couldn't if he wanted to. He's chained up. He's asleep. This is what I want to preach on. I want to preach on Having peace when you should be panicking. Hmm? Yeah, hallelujah, Brother Clint. Come morning, it's going to be all right. But come morning in Peter's life, it wasn't going to be all right. Now, we know by history he ended up being crucified. He didn't feel worthy to be crucified like the Lord, so uh, he bid them to crucify him upside down. Uh, uh, but that day, they was probably going to chop his head off. He should have been panicking. He wasn't singing about the sweet by and by. He should have been panicking. But why wasn't he panicking? He had peace. How do you know he had peace, preacher? Or well, how else could he be asleep? Right. Right. Having peace when you should be panicking. Well, how'd that all happen? Well, let me give you a few things. We'll go to the house. Can I say Peter found in the midst of his dire situation when he should have been panicking, he found peace because he found the Savior couldn't fail. Uh, 
Deuteronomy 31, 6 says, Be strong and of a good courage, fear not, nor be afraid of them, for the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee, he will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Uh, uh, how can you have peace in the midst of your panic situation? Uh, I want to tell you something. You've got to realize there's a Savior who cannot fail. Uh, hey, Peter had been with him for three and a half years. Uh, uh, Peter saw uh, a multitude of folks uh, uh, starving to death. Uh, and one lad had a few uh, uh, hush puppies and a few uh, 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 fish sticks. And the Lord said, uh, give me what you got. Uh, and he blessed it. Uh, and he broke it. Uh, and that starving crowd ate as much as they could. Uh, and they went home filled. Uh, he found a Savior that could not fail. Uh, hey, Peter saw uh, uh, folks with withered hands uh, get to the Savior. And the Savior could not fail. Uh, and they were made whole. Uh, he saw the lame walk. Uh, he saw the dead be brought back to life. Uh, he saw the blind see. Uh, hey, I'm tell you he said uh, hey uh, I've got a savior uh, who will not fail me uh, not forsake me uh, he's never failed yet uh, and he'll not fail me tonight what a blessing uh, it do you and I some good when we realize 2,000 years later Jesus still hadn't failed uh, there's a savior that cannot fail can I say, secondly, he found a stone that could not be sealed. Hmm? Oh, in uh, 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 Matthew 27, 66, it says, So they went uh, and made the sepulcher sure, uh, sealing the stone... Uh, and setting a watch. I want to tell you something. It couldn't have been any more secured. They put a big stone over the tomb. They secured it. Then they sealed it. Then they put some guards outside it. Surely nobody was getting in or coming out. Oh, but there's a Savior in there that cannot fail. And the Bible says in Matthew 28 and 5, And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye. I know that you seek Jesus which was crucified uh, he is not here for his reason as he said uh, come see the place where the Lord lay uh, what happened the stone couldn't seal uh, hey uh, they thought they had him uh, but he's a savior it can't be a fail uh, and there's a stone that couldn't be sealed uh, cause the savior had it rolled back uh, walked out uh, victorious over death hell and the grave uh, with the keys to hell in his hand uh, Peter could have peace uh, in the midst of a panic situation because uh, he knew the Savior couldn't fail. Uh, the stone couldn't hold him uh, and the jail wouldn't hold Peter. Huh? Right, Whoa, what a Savior. Can I help you with something? If all that man could throw against Jesus and all that the devil could throw against him couldn't stop him, why do you think that anything could stop him on your account? Mm. Say this is too big, not for him. How do you have peace in the midst of his panic? And he should have been panicking, preacher. Well, Peter found that there's a ship that can't sink. Mm. Listen to what Mark says in Mark four thirty seven. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. Now listen, Peter was a fisherman. Peter had been on the seas many a times, but Peter had never seen a storm so violent that the waves beat into the ship, and the ship is now full of water. I don't know who you are, but if the boat gets full of water, it's not sailing to the other side. Uh, but oh, we're talking about a Savior that cannot fail. Uh, uh, we're talking about He's on board. Uh, and when Jesus is on board your boat, uh, friend, it will float. Uh, uh, listen, uh, the Bible goes on to say, uh, and He was in the hinder part of the ship, who the master, uh, uh, asleep on a pillow. Uh, and they wake Him and said unto Him, Master, carest not that we, now that we perish. Uh, listen, the only thing 
came dry in that boat was Jesus. Uh, what was Jesus doing? He's asleep. Uh, it's a panic situation. Uh, the boat's surely going to sink. Uh, what's Jesus doing? Uh, he's asleep. Uh, where do you think Peter learned to go to sleep when the panic situation's going on? He's done met the Savior that could not fail. Uh, hey, what did Jesus do? Uh, in verse 39, and he rose. Uh, he rebuked the wind, uh, said unto the sea, Peace be still. Uh, and the wind ceased, uh, and there was a great calm. Uh, Peter found there's a ship that won't sink. Uh, hey, uh, that same peace be still uh, was spoken to Peter's heart, uh, and Peter just went to sleep like the master did, huh? Oh, how do, how, do, how do you have peace? He learned it from Jesus. Hmm. You know what to help you and I? Every time there's a panic situation in our life, the Lord's not wringing His hands. All the Lord has to do is say, Peace. And there's peace. Hmm. The worst of storms calm before His feet because he's the one that controls the elements. Mm. Was Jesus panicked in the middle of that storm on that boat? Nope. And Peter learned that. He found there's a ship that won't sink. How did he have peace when he should have been panicking? He found there's a sifter that can't prevail. Oh, in Luke 22... Verse 31, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Amen. Now the Lord warned him, told him, Satan hath desired to have you, to sift you as wheat. Mm, can I say? Peter didn't really pay much attention because Peter already thought he was, he was willing to die with the Lord. He loved the Lord. He would never fail the Lord. He, he, the Lord goes on to tell him a few verses later, uh, the cock's not going to uh, uh, crow three times for you, or crow before you deny me three times. But he said he's desired to have you to sift you as wheat. Then the Lord tells him a few things. Again, Peter's not listening. How many times have we heard preaching and really didn't pay attention till our world gets turned upside down and we go back and we get to think, boy, I should have paid attention to that message. Amen. Mm. Well, this is what the Lord tells him. He says, but I have prayed for thee. Now listen, he's our mediator. Yes. The Lord, when he's praying and interceding before us, business is going to pick up in heaven. He said, I have prayed for thee. What did he pray? That God get him out of it? No. Nope. That thy faith fail not. How is Peter chained between two prisoners uh, uh, and asleep? He, he's realized that when the Lord's on your side, it'll be all right. You see, back during his sifting, he didn't have faith. But he's learned faith because now when he's being sifted, he's just going to sleep. Hmm? He says that thy faith fail not. And listen what else he says. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. The Lord is saying, now, when you get through all this, and you will get through it, strengthen the brethren. Peter found there's a sifter that can't not prevail. Friends, you're going to face some things. You're never going to face it alone because you've got a Savior that will not fail. You're in the good old gospel ship that will not be sunk. Are you listening? Huh? There was a stone that could not be sealed, and you will face some things. You will be sifted. You will face sickness. You will face storm clouds. Uh, you will face sufferings. You will face trials. You will face heartache. But, friend, you will come through it. Peter learned that the sifter will not prevail because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Peter learned that. That's how he could go to sleep. He realized it. It's just another trip through the sifter. It'll be all right. Huh? Did you ever face something you never faced before and you're kind of anxious about it, and then when you did it, it wasn't no big deal? Now, my darling, lovely sister over here, Miss Cinda, said, now, when are you facing your test, preacher? I'm thinking, what test? I got no test coming up. And she reminded me, I got a, November 20th, I got to go see the 
the doctor did my surgery, was a cancer doctor again, and she reminded me I'm going to have to have a tube run up my nose and scope my throat and all. That's real, but right before I preach, she's telling me all this stuff. That ain't right, Brother Phil. You pray for her. And don't pray God kills her, but pray God really disturbs her real good, okay? Uh, now I want to tell you something. This time last year, if you told me I was going to have to go see a doctor several times this year and he's going to run a camera up my nose and look down my throat, I'd say, we ain't making that appointment. But after having it done several times, you know what? It's not as bad as you think. It does sound bad. The worst one's when I'm doing it and they were seeing if I can swallow. I said, oh, we can put it on the screen. You want to watch? No, I don't. I want out of here. Hmm? But really, I mean, it's no picnic, is it, Brother Jack? But it, it's not as bad as you really thought it would be the first time. Huh? Matter of fact, the first time I went, and the first time it's going to be done, they brought that scope in, and my wife knew what it was, and she knew she better not tell me, because that would be the end of the appointment. I'd be walking out. But it's not that big a deal. It really isn't. It's a little uncomfortable, but it's not that big a deal. Especially if they put a lot of that numbing stuff on it, but then your whole nostril's numb for a half day. You know when you go to the dentist, your face is numb? Your nostril's that way. She don't know if your nose is run or not. You feel kind of weird. But it's not that big a deal. You say, what are you talking about, preacher? When Peter went through that sifter and he failed greatly, and then the Lord had that little meeting with him on the seashore, and he three times asked him, Peter, do you love me? And Peter finally says, Lord, you know all things. You know I love thee. And he kept telling him, feed my sheep, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. See, that day, the Lord showed Peter how much the Lord loved him, and Peter learned to forgive himself and realize how much he loved the Lord. Amen. Well, shortly after that, he preaches at Pentecost. 3,000 people were added to the church. And you never see Peter ever in the shape that he was in before because he'd come through it. Well, now he realizes it's just no sifter, but he said, I've been through this. It's really not that bad. I'll just trust Jesus. Hmm? Are you listening? The anxiety is now gone because he's realized how great God really is. That's how you can sleep between two prisoners. I thought about this lastly. How in the world could he have peace when he should be panicking? Because he found there's a spirit that could comfort. Remember John 14? Jesus has told him he's got to go away and prepare a place for them. They're all, they're all sad. They're upset. He says, let not your heart be troubled. And he's trying to encourage them. And then he tells them this down in verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. He later goes on to say, Peace, my peace I leave with thee. How could he have peace in the midst of a time when he should be panicking? Because he found there's a Spirit within that comforts him. He's able to bring peace that this world has no idea about. I've said all that to say this. If a man get ready to be executed, chained between two soldiers in the midst of a dark prison, if he can have peace in the midst of all that, why do we let little things trouble us? The Bible says God's no respecter of persons. God didn't love Peter any more than he loves you. God didn't love Peter any less than he loves you. God didn't treat Peter any more special than he treats you. Matter of fact, God's been better to you and me than he was Peter because Peter didn't have a complete copy of the Word of God. Peter didn't have all them promises like greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He didn't have all those uh, uh, promises that you and I can look to and glean from. He didn't have them. But we do. Why do we fall apart so much? Because we don't depend on God like our life depends on it. Peter didn't have anything else but the Lord. But he found that was enough. 
you and I get so bent out of shape and we ignore the peace available to us by just learning to rest on the Lord. That's all Peter had. He said, well, Lord, here we are. If this is the end, thy will be done. I'll see you in the morning. If not, Lord, got more for me to do, thy will be done. But anyway, Lord, this is all too big for me, so you can have it. I'm going to go to sleep. And he did. There have been times when things were too big for me as a pastor, and I just learned to say, Lord, this is too big for me. Lord, here it is. You can have it. And I was able to go to sleep. Friend, if you'll ever learn, there is a peace which passes all understanding. But in order to have that peace, you have to understand that you've got to let go of whatever it is that is troubling you. And the only way to let go of it is to let the Lord have it. What else was Peter going to do? Kick and squirm and fight and scream? They'd probably hit him with the butt of a sword and shut him up. No, he just rested on the Lord and went to sleep. And the Lord had need of him. Miss Janet said in her testimony Sunday night, you're never going before it's your time anyway. And if you're here, it's because God has something for you to do. And so Peter just realized whether he's going or whether he's staying, blessed be the name of the Lord. And he went to sleep. And when he was brought to, he was set free. And he went on to preach many more times and win many more people to God. Friend, instead of running to panic, learn to run to peace. It's a much better trip. And panicking doesn't do anything but tear your nerves up. It also is a bad testimony of those around you that you really don't trust the Lord. What a great testimony in this obscure verse in the middle of Acts of how great our God is. Rhoda's the only one who believed it was Peter at the door. He had to go and straighten them all out, send word to James. And even today, he's still straighten out believers who don't have enough faith to believe that God can handle their little problems Amen. when we look to where God handled a big problem for Peter. It's not too hard for God. It's not too big for God. God's just waiting for you to give it to him, and then God will give you the peace he gave Peter. I've got good news. You don't have to panic. You can find peace in the midst of your storm. And peace is in Jesus. And old friend, when you got him, you got it all. Let's all stand, Brother Clinton. You get us on. Maybe you need to come and thank him for peace in the midst of your storm. Maybe you need to come and thank him that he's never failed you. Maybe you're in a, in a situation, you just need his touch. You need to come and ask him, say, Lord, help me. need some help. Maybe he spoke to you about something else. Maybe here tonight you're not saved. Why don't you come trust the Savior? He'll never fail you, friend. Amen. Just come and give your life to Jesus. Maybe some other reason God spoke to your heart. You let him have his ways. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we sure do love you. Thank you for the word of God. Lord, I'm thankful for Calvary and in the, in the scriptures on Calvary. I'm thankful for the empty grave and, and the scriptures on that. I'm thankful for the salvation verses. Lord, I'm thankful you put, included this, this event. That, Lord, we can look that even in the worst of circumstances, we can find peace. Now, Father, bless. Help these thy people. Encourage them. Strengthen their faith. And help them to find peace in their next storm. Lord, I pray that, Lord, you just speak to hearts now. Whatever anybody's facing, Lord, help them to give it to thee. Certainly, God, if there's anybody here tonight unsaved, I pray you'd speak to their heart. They'd come and give their life to Jesus and have that great peace, knowing that they've been saved and their sins are forgiven. God, have your way in this invitation. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.